Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here once again. I have to admit that over the past year, I've been less active than usual. As a matter of fact, I've been downright passive, and it's really hampered any attempt at improvement I may have wanted to make on myself. Oh well. However, there is something passive that's made quite a bit of improvement recently, and that is the passive infrared motion sensor. Panasonic has been doing some brilliant work, and we're thrilled to be able to use some of their sensors on four of our new boards. Introducing the SparkFun PIR Breakout at 1 milliamp and 170 milliamps, and the SparkFun Quick PIR Breakout also at 1 milliamp and 170 milliamps. The heart of all four of these boards is Panasonic's low profile, high sensitivity PIR module. Sensor height is only 10.9 millimeters, compared to the standard PIR height of about 14.5 millimeters. Thanks to a unique slit design in the pyroelectric elements, the sensitivity has been significantly improved, meaning that even if the temperature difference between the background and the target is quite small, reliable detection is still possible. And since these sensors don't use the conventional FET setup, but rather a feedback capacitor and op amp, they can offer four times better signal to noise ratio. They offer a five meter detection range, but that's a bit over 16 feet for those of us stateside, with a detection area spreading 90 degrees by 90 degrees. There are two options for the sensor. One draws 170 milliamps in standby mode, designed for projects that will have constant power input from a plugged in or a hardwired power source, and a second one that draws a mere one milliamp in standby mode, ideal for projects that will be run off of a battery source. Now, while two of these boards simply place the module onto a breakout board, allowing you to easily monitor the sensor's digital output, We've also created a pair of boards that add an ATtiny84 with firmware that monitors the sensor's digital output signal, debounces that signal along with a configurable interrupt, and translates it all to the I2C interface, saving you steps in adding PIR sensing to an existing QUIC or I2C project. And aside from the two QUIC connectors and pinouts, these versions of the PIR breakouts also have a 2x3 header on the back of the board should you want or need to reprogram the ATtiny84 for more specific project needs. If you've worked with PIR motion sensors before, then you know that they are not proximity sensors. They can't tell you the distance to an object, just whether or not an object is present. So, sensors like this are used for things like lighting control, so that the lights aren't blaring in a room when no one's in there. Uh, digital signage on vending machines. So, if someone walks past your vending machine, bam, a digital advert comes on and lights up and draws them in. Uh, security cameras. So, they're only recording when someone's in the room and even IoT projects and home automation. And now, I could have thrown together one of these sensors with a microcontroller and a relay, and then shown you me walking down a dark hall, and all of a sudden, bam, light comes on. But I'd like to think you've come to expect more from me than that. So, I tell you what, give me like a week and a half, and then check back. I will come up with a much better demo than man walking down a hallway. Of course, you already probably have more great ideas for projects in your head than I could ever come up with. So don't wait for me and my project. Head over to sparkfun.com today and pick up your SparkFun PIR breakout in either plain or quick flavored. And please, stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking.